Hey guys. So this is kind of going to be a, this one's, this is a kind of a rant, I guess. This one's not really planned though. Um, kind of just, uh, got the inspiration to do it out of nowhere. And this is going to be about, um, nostalgia in old games. So since I've taken like a year off, um, you know, I won't say you can't play League of Legends like all the time, but um, at the very least, I can't play League of Legends all the time. I can play it most of the time, but every now and then I need a break. And, you know, I don't really like shelling out like 60 bucks for some like solo player game all the time. Uh, all the time when I feel like taking a break. Um, and also, like, a lot of the time when I, when I get a game, I really just want to play it start to finish. <sighs> Instead of pacing myself, which is also not good, because making sure you play at least a few games of League every day to stay up to date on, uh, mechanics and just, like, what's trending in the meta, you know, even if there isn't a patch, is pretty important. So... I've pl so I've gone back to a lot of uh, games that I used to play over the course of this year. You know, um, RuneScape, old school RuneScape, um, Maple Story, Combat Arms, Crossfire. Um, a lot of these really, you know, old games that a lot of people had some real nice memories of back in the day. And you think of, you know, I played RuneScape back in its heyday, you know, uh, back in the 07 era, maybe not like a bunch of 2007 itself, but a lot in that era. I played Combat Arms back when it was uh, in its heyday, back in like 20, 2010, 2012-ish. Uh, I, I don't think I played 09, but I was close. So I was there when there were a bunch of people. Uh, Maple Story back in, I think, 07 as well. Um, maybe even 05. You know, I'm not exactly sure when the, the heyday for Maple Story was, but I'm pretty sure I was there. I was back when, like, you could even get into Skinia because there are just too many people. You know, all the fucking channel population things were pushed to the max. Um, so, yeah, I played, I played all these games back in their heyday. And you know, coming back to them, it's definitely weird. I was, I was really good at Common Arms, um, Maple Story, and RuneScape. You know, I I played a lot, but I never took like super seriously. Like I didn't want to pay for membership back then. Obviously, I was a fucking kid. Um, and Maple Story, I never used NX, and back then it was hard as fuck to grind. So, yeah, you can imagine. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get super high. Um, and I quit or I quit before Big Bang. I think I came back a little bit after Big Bang just to see how it was and I was like, yeah, don't really like to play this game anymore. Um And I even spent some time on a private server called Maple Royals. I think it's the most popular private server at the moment. It's basically like um what O seven scape is for uh or like old school is for runescapers. It's just a an old patch of Maple Story with like low rates to simulate like what it was before, kind of thing. You know, playing these like older versions of the games and playing the, the current versions of the games, you know, like OS versus RS3. Royals versus Reboot or just normal Maple. You know, it's, it's very interesting because some people might hate the like OS is just not okay, so not as much like Royals versus Maple Story. It's very clear that Maple Story is just like the better game, and I I didn't like RS3 more than OS, and I'm sure a lot of people don't, 
But when you look at the baseline, like the graphics are better, there's more content, the the battle system's more intuitive, like there's more you can do with it. It's just that like people are so like they fucking you you play RuneScape and you do the combat for like fifteen years, obviously you're gonna learn the intricacies of it. But like at the end of the day, if you took time to master like EOC versus like current like like just classic RuneScape combat, EOC's got a lot more to it. Although you might argue that you know more complexity isn't always better, that's fair. But, you know, <clears throat> at the end of the day, when you observe it, I think if you took someone who has no uh, nostalgic attachment to either of these games, and you told them to play the old versions and the new versions, it's very clear what they tell you. I, I think they tell you that the new versions are better. And a lot of people who played RuneScape and MapleStory back in the day, like I did, They'll, they'll try to go back to, um, you know, either Royals or Old School and try to relive, like, oh yeah, I love playing the game back at this time. And they'll come back, and they'll play for a bit, and they'll be like, and they'll, and they'll leave, not not soon after. You know, it'll be fun for a bit, you know, being like nostalgia and stuff, and then they'll leave. And why is that? You know, Old School is a lot better than 07 scape was back then um like actual 07 scape like in terms of like polish and all that's like how easy it is to find guides and stuff same thing with royals royals is a lot better than maple was back then you can buy everything with mezzos you get free annex um there's a slightly increased rate so it's not like a the absolute worst thing in the world there's like epic gear and stuff to like make it in game like more engaging and stuff, um, but the thing is, a lot of the reason I feel at least that people, including myself, feel so nostalgic for those old days is because back then, a lot of the people who feel nostalgic enough to go back and play now, you had a lot more time. You know, you were in like middle school, high school, you don't have any obligations, you can kind of just do whatever, you know. Now a lot of these people, they're busy with college, they're busy with, um, they're busy with work, whatnot. And I think one of the hugely underrated things, there's, there's two really. One, the player base was, or at least felt a lot more massive back then. Yeah, it might have been hackers or botters or macroers or gold farmers or meso farmers, whatever. You know, that might have been why it felt so much more active. But um, things were definitely more active back then in both these games. And the other thing is, um, there's a sense of more accomplishment and there's more of a sense of wonder when you did things back then because back then there wasn't okay there, there was like runescape like wiki and stuff and like you could definitely go online on maple story and like search up like oh yeah how do i do this quest and stuff but you know instead of being in like a wiki or like a reddit or just having all this information readily available to you people telling you how to level people telling you how to like in-depth boss guides like people telling you like this is what you do here is what you do here that is it's like so polished now from all these years there's a lot of heisei or there's like a lot of uh just just uh gossip and like talk about like oh yeah you should do this like even in reality it probably wasn't even like the best thing to do you go on fucking like yahoo answers and shit and, <laughs> and pick out like answers and it was just like it's very um I don't know the word, uh, primitive, I guess. Um, as primitive as it can be playing a computer game in the 20s. <laughs> but, like, um, that's the best way I can describe it, really. You know, when everything is hard, you feel the progression a lot more. It means a lot more. And while, yes, it's, it's really fun in its own sense, to um, be able to make it to endgame and stuff, which is um, what I'm going to bring up now. This is the next point I want to talk about. 
a lot of people in New Maple Story and New RuneScape, um, or just like new new old school, I guess. <laughs> that sounds so dumb. But on um, the the old school servers that have opened now, um, the official ones. It feels a lot less social than it used to be. Because a lot of people know, like like I said, everyone knows like what you're supposed to do to make it to endgame now. It's like like and for like it's different for, for each game, right? Most people in old school they want to get to the point where they can PvP. Everyone knows if you wanna make a pure, this is what you get your defense to, this is what you get your strength to, there's the quest you do, there's what you train. Um, there's the items you're looking for, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of the stuff that people would do before, you know, like people would play like fucking Fist of Gothics at like level 50. It's absolutely terrible EXP and you're probably going to get rinsed all the time. And it's a lag fest if you don't have a good computer sitting in the middle. But it was fun, you know, and that's what people cared about because like progression was hard. You know, people just wanted to take a break. People weren't 100% sure uh, and people were just playing mainly... Like, for fun, you know? But the thing is, if you go back to, like, Maple Royals now, you go back to um, OS, RS right now, and you try to do that stuff, most of that shit's dead, you know? Most people who come back, they they feel nostalgic for a little bit, and then they're like, you know what, there's... No one's really doing this stuff because everyone's just going for endgame to PK because that's where all the fun is. Or, like, everyone's going for endgame to boss now in Maple Story because, you know, that's where all the fun is. And while it's a lot easier to attain these now, because, uh, well, OS is still kind of a grind, but at least you have all these new, like, things available to you. Um, and, you know, if you want to look online for, yeah, this is how you do things, then, yeah, it's a, you, it's a lot easier than it was back then, because there's um, a lot more ease of access to this information. Um, so for some people... They have the time to grind back up on these games, and they have fun, and like they get to experience all the end game content they couldn't as a kid because they like didn't know where to get the information on how to make it there, or they just uh, um, they just like quit too early for whatever reason, and they come back and they're like, oh wow, I can play end game now because the game is so different and it's a lot easier to make it there, um, and they like that, and that's fine. But for way more people, they'll come back and they'll be like, you know, I either just don't have the time for this or I don't, it's just not the same. And you're like, why is that, right? Because objectively, the games are just better now than they were before. You know, Royals, like I said, much better than old Maple Story back in the time that it's trying to emulate. Uh, OS, a lot better than old OS back then, you know, way less bother. Still, still some, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're around, there's gold sellers and whatnot. But still overall a much better game than it was actually back in the time if you're just comparing the game itself things the community has changed and like i said it's it's so much harder now to just find someone to sit down and have a conversation with in both the old school versions but especially like the new versions it's, it's so much harder one part part of it is because the player base is smaller you know you would make a friend back in those days, and most of the time they'd be getting on every day. You could talk to them, and you, you build friendships that way. But a lot of the people who play now, you know, it's they're older, you know. Um, they're older, and they don't have as much time. And a lot of people, like I said, because that endgame stuff is so intense right there, um, and you know now, like, back then, you when you made your first character, you kind of just got attached to it, but you... You know, you would level up defense and runescape and stuff. You would, you would put points in, like, I don't know, you'd put points in, like, luck or something. as like a bowman or something in Maple Store, and you fuck up your character. But you grow attached to that character, and you play him anyway. Even if you are gimped for, like, the later game, if you ever fucking make it there. Um, and whatnot. But now that you come back, it's like, oh, you know better. But, you know, knowing better actually takes some of the fun out of it. When you don't know, it's it's... It's interesting, it's engaging, you know, you never know what you're going to get next. But that doesn't really exist anymore because the games have been around for so long that you just don't feel that anymore. And how it's kind of, it's kind of sad in a way to me. But it's also kind of interesting the way things work, the way like nostalgia kind of works.
Because I'm sure if you played the games back in those days, and then either like for like recently what prompted this was I watched the RuneScape documentary yesterday, the 15 years one. And I'm sure anyone who randomly hears a Maple Story song, you know, I know um, some editors for Ma I like the, the offline TV people, like Scar and them. I know their editor likes to use a lot of Maple Story BGMs. And for some people, that'll do it. They'll, they'll hear like just one BGM and be like, oh, baby, this takes me back. And th they'll want to look up, like, how do I play Maple Story now? And then, um, same thing with like when people hear RuneScape BGM. Um, or just see anything about RuneScape, they'll be like, oh my god, I want to go back now. And they like hear like the RuneScape like login screen, the iconic theme, and they, they go back. And they go back and they test it, like, wait a minute, this game sucks. Let me, let me play the old school version, and then they go play the old school version, and it's just like, wait a minute. this I thought this was what I wanted, but it's, it's just not the same. And I think it's, yeah, it's really sad. Because, like, obviously those days are never coming back, you know. Um both for yourself and for the game, you know, obviously both games are past their prime. You know, OS is kind of having a renaissance, but I don't think it'll ever reach, like, what it reached before. Um, MapleStory's in a worse spot. Uh, the reboot did help a bit. And I think it's really interesting that both games, you know, huge games back in the day, in, in their heydays, thought they were untouchable, and then when they started the decline happening, they both released um, things to appeal to the old players to try in an attempt to bring them back. Reboot and um, old school servers. And in a way, it makes me so happy that I chose to play a league. Because while I did play, and I, I currently am still playing Maple on reboot, not so much RuneScape on old school. Um, and they're, 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 they're not bad games. It makes me so happy that I stayed with League because League never had to go back into to appeal to all their like old players for anything like super significant saying like, oh yeah, like we clearly fucked up. This is like a go we went back to season two now. like. That doesn't happen in League, and I don't think it'll ever happen, because League doesn't fuck up their game that badly. You know, people can complain about Art and Sensor meta, Black Cleaver meta, um, Tank meta, Gangplank Mordekaiser meta. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, it's kind of a different type of game, but the thing is, like, a lot of the time, that shit doesn't even matter to you, to most people, because most people just suck at the game too much, you know? If you play, like, high MMR every season, then yeah, you feel it a bit more because you kind of have to conform, it's more important to conform to the meta at a high level, otherwise you just lose. But still, there's one trick to make it. But the thing about League is that they have always listened to their player base enough, despite what Reddit and shit will tell you, to the point where, like, the games that have been fucked up to the state where it's just like, oh yeah, we gotta, we gotta revert, like, fucking, like, a year's, or, like, multiple years in the case of, like, RuneScape and MapleStory, um, to appeal to people to try to bring players back because the game's dying. And, you know, you can argue it would have been inevitable. You know, they're like, yeah, Maple would have just died out anyway, Rescape would have died out anyway. But the thing is, like, these guys did a lot of the shit to shoot themselves in the foot. Maple story, um, people will point a Big Bang, but I think it's more the microtransactions just overtaking everything that did it. And Rescape, obviously, real world trade, willingness removal. That's what it's really obvious. The thing about this that I don't agree with people about is they come back and they're like, there's just too much shit now. Or like, I don't like all this shit. And this is what I, I don't like hearing. Because there are, as like for all the people who quit, you know, most of the people don't make it to Endgame in the old days and they quit. There's a bunch of people who did make it to Endgame. And the thing is, it's the same thing in League. Uh, well, to a lesser extent, I guess. But the thing is, you don't want to just ignore your best players, you know? While they're a smaller percent, those are the guys, the, the dedicated ones, who make it to, like, Endgame, the, the guys who are really good. Those are the guys who bring you a lot of exposure, right? Who do people watch on Twitch, you know? How many, for all the, like, e-girl lol shit that you see, 
you know, most of the top street, I'm a cutie pie, it's not an e-girl dog, he's fucking ranked two on like an A or whatever, and a lot of the people who get big viewership, they're like ex-pros, or they're current pros, or they're just really good solo queue players, or they're like really good one tricks, who are high elo, you know, you don't see a lot of plat players pulling like 5k views, you know, on consistently, because people want to see the best, because the best might get your game to people, um, same thing in like Maple Story. If you played back then, I'm sure you remember who Tiger, Sushi, Curry is Hot, Kane Priest, all those people, um, Novinha, whatever, like, because the people who are the best, you know, they, they bring people because they're interesting, you know, um, they attract people to, like, strive there, and they help your game a lot, and you need to reward those people by adding content. And the thing is, like, when you leave a game for a while, like, the game is not going to stop for you. Um, because if they, like, you can't stop your updates on a game just because, like, you want to keep the status quo. Because that's not how you survive as, like, a game company, you know. You have to constantly be putting out, like, new content. You can argue some of the content that RS3 and MapleStory, GMS put out as bad, sure, but condemning them for saying like, oh my god, Big Bang killed the game, no it didn't, the game was fucking terrible to play before, like it was just like a huge, like everyone played because it was like nostalgic as fuck, it was like their first online game, um, or one of the first, like in reality, leveling up in the game was like pulling fucking teeth, it was terrible, um, RuneScape, not as bad, but it was still pretty big grind and unless you paid for membership you didn't get to do a lot of stuff past like level 70 80 kind of and that sucked you were kind of just stuck like doing clan wars and shit and you know a lot of the bossing back then was like with the exception of maybe like jad it was pretty uninteractive and they made a lot more interactive bosses um, I made the game a lot more interesting, and some people are like, well, the game is too complicated now, or, you know, it doesn't feel like the same, well, the thing is, like, you, when you develop a game, you don't cater to the people who quit and come back five years later, <laughs> you cater to the people who play your game actively, and the people who are good, you know, because, um, for, for the most part, you know, you don't, it's like, you don't necessarily always do it, like, if something is, like, Absolutely, like if lower level players like can't level up because there's not enough in there, you throw them a bone. But for the most part, your stuff is aimed at the people who don't have anything left to do. Because if those people leave, then you're fucked, right? Imagine if just like I'm a cutie pie shifter, Dyrus, all these guys. Like, you know, let's just go play Dota two. You know, let's just go stream Dota two instead. You know, there's a lot of people who would stop watching League. You know, if every just good League streamer moved over, they're like, yeah, let's just go play Dota two, and then people watch them go play Dota two, and they're like, oh yeah, let's go play Dota two too. You know. It's alienating like your best players or like the top part of your player base is even worse usually than alienating like the the people who are like the the, the casual average player uh, just because how much pull they have um, and how much they like in terms of like how they influence the the other people who play the game. Um, the thing about league is that it's found. A relatively good balance for that you know they they reference like I'm a cutie pie and all this stuff you know you'll see writers hang out in the chats of like the popular streamers they're very engaged pa balance patches are almost always dictated towards what's meta and high yellow in the pro scene um, they always like franchising is fucking coming to an eSport like holy sh holy shit um, you know Yes, you can always argue, like people on Reddit will, that they didn't do everything they could. But when you compare how much they do to other game developers, it's actually insane how much they do. Uh, like, look at fucking Overwatch. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't try to... I'm glad I didn't commit to that game. That's all I'll say on that. But... Riot, like... When you go back to like some of the other games you played, like anything you ever played as like a kid, Go back and see, like the progression of like how that game died. It's probably dead, you know. Like realistically speaking, most of the games you play as a kid, they're they're probably pretty dead. 
you go back and see what they did leading up to how they declined versus like League of Legends and stuff, and you'll realize just how good we have it with, with Riot and League. And I'm not saying this like to chill out or anything, like legit. It's just like you go back and you look at those games and how they were handled compared to how League is handled, and it's fucking day and night. Most of those games don't even have fucking matchmaking. Matchmaking's been in League for like forever. Balancing around like pro play or the good players, like I wish there was pro play in some of the games I fucking played. Like legitimate pro play that like was acknowledged more by the developers than just like, oh yeah, here's here's ten K and then let's go release uh let's go release more guns that make us a hundred K and are completely broken for public players, ignoring pro play and gun balance and um uh, yeah, here, here's 10k from the last g gun we released. Go have fun, right? When I went to League for the first time, it was insane. I was like, wait, there's a matchmaking system? Wait, they balance this game? Wait, they create like new content and try to balance it rather than just power creeping all the time? You know, like, power creep happened eventually in League, but that's more like they wanted to make more kits more interesting and they, they balance up old shit, which is ridiculous for a, a game back in like 010. Or 10, it's like 2010. So, you know, I, I won't deny I've had my moments where I'm like, wow, this game is awfully balanced, or what the fuck's Riot doing? But when you go back and compare it as the old games that you used to play, probably, it it's day and night. And, you know, while I'm still having fun, you know, when I went back to OS earlier in the year, when I played Common Arms a bit a few months ago when I'm playing Reboot, right now. It's not that I'm not having fun. But the way I have fun is completely different than how I had fun back then. And I think that's fine. But I think it's really it's really interesting how things work. And it really makes me wonder, um, you know, if every game developer worked the way right, you know, heavy community interaction, both in just talking to them and listening to what they say. You know, making sure you cater to every part of your player base. You know, you got the skins for the the low level players that they're really interested in. You got the balance patches for the high level players and whatnot. Um, you got the progression system with the leagues and divisions to make it seem like even the worst players can have that sense of improving. And you do it time after time, year after year. You know, I see no reason why your game can't succeed. You know. It's a lot easier to just hop on to like an MMO for 10 minutes every day when you're busy than playing like games of League, but but despite all that, League has been the game that stayed popular all these years and not an MMO besides really like World of Warcraft, which is still not in its heyday anymore. And, you know, I just kind of wanted to talk about it because, you know, I have gone back and played a lot of the games I used to play throughout this year. And I kind of want to hear what you guys think of all this. So that's all I really had to say. Um, this is pretty random. <laughs> but um, I just really got to thinking about it last night, or yesterday after I watched the RuneScape documentary and really just wanted to get my thoughts out there. Thanks for watching.